In this video, we'll be looking at the creation and export of blend shapes within Houdini. This will be done using KineFX. I do already have a video covering this. However, that was made in an earlier version of Houdini. That version of Houdini did not have a native node set up for exporting shapes. That video goes into a lot of depth into how blend shapes actually work. This video will be shorter and more straightforward, and it will be covering nodes which were added in Houdini 19 and 19.5. These nodes provide a native setup for exporting and creating blend shapes within Houdini. We have a very basic setup here. I have some very basic geometry, and I'm merging this to make a single piece of geometry. I'm isolating parts of the geometry with a group. So that's our basic geometry. Then we have a line. The line will serve as our rig. In order to add weights to our rig, we will need an extra piece of geometry. And in order to export a rig, we'll need to turn this geometry into joints. So this will be used to create a skeleton. However, this will not have any influence beyond that. We will not be doing a full weighted setup. This is going to be a very bare bones export. It's pretty much the minimum that you need to export blend shapes. We're not setting up a rig, we're just exporting the blend shapes. So now we can start the setup for the blend shapes. The first thing that our mesh will require in order to export blend shapes will be a name. I will add this using a name node. This will be a primitive name. In this case, I'll set the name to be Blend Mesh. We can apply the name to everything in the mesh as we're doing in this case, or we can apply the name to the parts of the mesh separately. All of the primitives within the mesh will need to have a name. However, the specifics of the name itself does not really matter. Next, we can create our blend shapes. In this case, I'm going to do this with a couple of jitter nodes, and I'll connect this after I've made my node. I'm going to use a group to specify that this is going to just my points for the sphere. I'll need to make sure that the group is applied to points. I can then adjust the point jitter to get my blend shape. I can duplicate this. I'll change the seed. I will also change the scale, and this will give us two different blend shapes to work with. We should now be able to add these blend shapes to our mesh. To do this, I'm going to use a merge packed node. I'm going to use this to store the values from my point jitter nodes. The merge pack node will allow us to name each of our shapes that we've added. In this case, I'll call them blend1 and blend2. This will create packed geometry for our blend shapes, and we can now store these blend shapes on our mesh itself. To do this, we are going to use the KineFX node, character blend shapes add. The first input of this node will be set by our default mesh. The second will be set by our blend shapes. This should store the blend shapes on our mesh. We will not, however, be able to export this mesh or animate it yet. To view our blend shapes, we're going to use the character blend shapes node. We can use this node to view our blend shapes. We will generally connect a node like the bone deform node after this node. However, we must be careful when using this node, as this node will remove the blend shapes from our mesh. This node will not currently work. We will need to connect a skeleton to this node. We will also need to connect animation to this node. In this case, both of these will be set by our line. The line will need to be turned into a skeleton. And to do this, I'm going to get a rig doctor node. I'll make sure that both branches of our network are connected to this. This will add a unique name to each of my points. To turn this into a skeleton, I'll need to initialize transforms. And this will now constitute an exportable rig. So now we should have our basic setup, and we should be able to view our blend shapes. However, we still cannot animate them. There is, however, something which we must be careful of, and this relates to the character blend shapes node. If I select this node and look at the geometry spreadsheet, we will find that there are no parameters for the blend shapes, and that is because this node removes all blend shape parameters. If we select the node where we added the blend shapes and look at the geometry spreadsheet here, we should find that we have blend shape parameters as part of our primitive transforms. We should have two individual parameters here, one for the blend shape channel and one for the blend shape name. So we should note that these values need to be exported. So if we want to export our mesh with blend shapes, we'll have to do this before we use a character blend shapes node. So we've attached our blend shapes and we need to view them. And to view them, we'll actually want to animate them. To animate our blend shapes, I'm going to use an attribute create node. We're going to create a couple of attributes here that coincide with our blend shape attributes. And these names should match up with our blend parameters. 
The first will be blend 1. The second parameter will be called blend 2. Both of these parameters will be detail attributes. We can then connect this, and I'm going to connect this to my animation branch. Updating the values for these attributes should allow us to animate our blend shapes. I will animate using the second blend attribute. First, I'll key the values at zero. I'll select another frame within my timeline. I'll change the value and set another keyframe. I'll then do this again for the third keyframe. So we should now be animating our blend shape. So we've now stored our blend shapes, and we've created parameters to drive our blend shapes. So to summarize, we have our mesh. We'll give our primitive geometry a name. We can then create our blend shapes. We'll store these in a merge pack node, and we'll name them in this node as well. We'll then add these to our mesh using the character blend shapes add node. And then I'm using an attribute create node, and I'm going to create detail attributes with the same name as my blend shapes. And that should be everything that we need to create and export the blend shapes. For the animation, we will also require certain values to export. In this case, it will be the attributes which you have just created. We can see these values in our geometry spreadsheet. They'll be under our detail attributes. And in this case, they'll be our blend one and two attributes. We can now export the character. In this case, we'll use a ROP FBX character output node. Our mesh will set the first input for this node. Our skeleton will set the second input, and our animation will set the third input. This export will not work particularly well, as we're not exporting all the parameters that we need. However, it should allow us to export our blend shapes. I'll update my output folder. In this case, I'll add them to an FBX folder. And I'm going to rename my export to blend shapes. So now we can export our blend shapes. I'll save to disk. I do get a warning. This is because my mesh currently has no weights. We also have not stored the proper detail attributes for our animation. We can use the configure clip info node to set the clip information. This, however, will not actually affect the blend shapes themselves. They should still export correctly without this. Here we can name the clip info in order to actually export it, but I'm not actually going to name it at the moment. Once again, this is not necessary for the base export. We should now be able to test our mesh. In this case, I'm going to test the import to Unreal. I'll drag and drop the mesh onto my content folder, and I should get the import dialog for the mesh. For this to work, we should make sure that import morph targets has been activated. There are a number of parameters which we can set within this menu, but that is the only parameter that we need to set for the shapes. Once we are satisfied with our parameters, we can use import all. In this case, I'll have various warnings. The first warning is for smoothing groups. Basically, this is saying we have not exported everything that we need to export from 3D Studio Max. This is not applicable to anything that we are doing. Next, it will say that we do not have a bind pose. Essentially, this is saying we have no weights. Finally, we have no UV parameters. The second two errors are from our rig setup, and that's from us not adding everything properly. The first error is not applicable. So I can close this window. Our mesh is now available, and we can drag it into the scene. This, however, is not the best place to deal with blend shapes. Instead, we'll look at the blueprint for the mesh itself. When we open the mesh blueprint, we should see that we have two morph targets here, and these will be our blend 1 and blend 2. And here we should be able to manipulate the blend shapes. So here we are in Unity. I'll drag and drop my FBX file onto the assets folder. We should now be able to drag and drop our mesh onto the scene. If we look at the hierarchy, we should see that we have the main mesh itself. And here we should have our two blend shapes. And we should be able to manipulate these blend shapes. If we look at the import for the FBX, we should also be able to preview the blend of the animation here. So that is setting up a basic blend shape export using the nodes added in Houdini 19.